the mama duck and her ducklings. You're gonna make this adorable mama duck and her little babies, and you're gonna be working with fleece. That is if you choose to work with fleece. I made mine out of fleece. So you're also gonna learn how to put in these eyes, these safety eyes with washers, and you're gonna learn how to put in these super cute and very easy dimples in the beak. So when you download the patterns, you're gonna notice that the patterns are exactly the same for the mama duck and the ducklings. You can make as many ducklings as you want. I decided to make three, but I am gonna walk you through the tutorial of making an actual little duckling. But of course, when you make the mama duckling, the tutorial is exactly the same for the mama duckling. So it really doesn't matter which one you start with, it's up to you. And um, really a simple process to do. And you'll really get a feeling for putting together this 3D duck with cute wings. I just, I just can't take the cuteness. Okay, so you know what I'm gonna tell you. Like I always say, download that pattern and let's get going and cutting and sewing cute duckling. I think in the past I have told you I, I wasn't going to lay things out for you again, but I did it. Okay, I went against what I said and I'm probably going to do it again. And that's because we're using a couple of different things for making this cute little duckling. So I just want to make a quick note first about these patterns. We are going to be making now the duckling pattern, but the mama pattern is the same exact thing as the duckling pattern, just bigger. So this tutorial works for the, the mama duck and also for the duckling pattern. It's again, the same exact pattern, but the duckling's smaller than the mama duck, which is larger. So you will do the same exact thing when you're creating the mama duck that I'm gonna show you here for the duckling. Okay, so for the duckling pattern, I have all my pieces cut out here and ready to go. What I want you to also do is get yourself a few, a few rocks. I was actually gonna go out and buy them, but then I was like, really? No, I went to my garden and I got a few rocks and I'll show you what we're gonna use those for when the time comes. I'm gonna use my chopstick to reach areas like of the duckling's beak to press in there and get some stuffing in there. My coordinating thread. And of course, and I've linked this in my resources for materials, we're going to be using eyes. Now you could use buttons if you want, but these are really inexpensive and you can find them on Amazon. Okay. Uh, really simple eyes like uh, button eyes. And I believe they're called um, plastic eyes with washers, but these are plastic washers. If you find ones with metal washers they're actually stronger and have a better hold but it's your call whatever it is that that you buy this one actually comes with a few various uh eyes and noses as well so we're going to be using this for the duck size our scissors of course our straight pins we never do anything without that and for the first time in my courses we're going to be working with fleece so I love working with fleece because fleece is very, very forgiving. And what I mean by that is like, there's a lot of things that you can get away with where you won't actually see it in fine detail when you look at the overall finished product. And when I come across one of those uh, points and why it's actually forgiving, I'll actually mention it during my tutorial. So I want you to get to know this fleece a bit better and to show you which is the wrong and which is the right side. So this is the wrong side. And as you can see, it's a little bit fluffier and almost like you can pick the fibers up on the wrong side. And then on the right side, it's just smoother. The pile is low, all right, and it's just smoother. And when you pick it up, it, it's like it doesn't come up. So if you compare them really close, you can actually see a difference. All right, so that is your correct side or the right side. And when I say plush or pile, I happen to be wearing this, which also is a plush. Um, when, when you say it's a high pile, the hairs are long, right? They're like much longer. And then when it's a low pile, the hairs are really short. That's all that means. All right, so when we start cutting, I wanna mention a few things, uh, again, when working with this fleece and the patterns. You're gonna pin everything down and cut, but I, you know me, I like to cut the most I can out of one shot, meaning if I can cut two pieces or three pieces out of one cut, I love that. 
and I like to do it that way. So if you decide to do it that way, know that you have to have one this way for the duckling body, and then the other one I want you to cut this way. So if you are gonna decide to pin this down and trace, trace one this way, pin it down and trace, and then the other one, pin it down the opposite way, right side of the pattern facing down, this way, and cut them out this way so that uh, the right sides will touch and, and it will work out. Remember, you're always working on the wrong side of the fleece. So if you don't want to do it that way, the other way is you can simply cut out a piece, two pieces that is, and with right sides looking down, right sides looking down, you can pin right on top of each other and you could cut right across this or around this. So you'll cut around and you'll have your two pieces the correct way. So for the duckling head, you're just going the regular way and I'll show you what to do about that hole. And same thing for the wings that I mentioned about the body. You're gonna cut two wings, four total, but two this way, and then another two you're gonna cut with the pattern facing down. Then for the tummy regular, just place it down on the wrong side and cut one out. And of course, you know for the duckling beak, you can do two the same way with the right sides touching and cutting it out that way. So when you cut your fleece, you're gonna notice that it's nice and fluffy and chunky. What helps it be super forgiving? Remember, bringing your scissors all the way down. And I'm gonna tell you a few things about the markings that I've made on these patterns. So I'm showing you on the patterns where to leave the opening. So what you wanna do is you wanna either make a marking with a pencil or you can make a tiny, tiny snippet right here. And that will remind you just real small of a cut. That will remind you that that is your opening to leave. This here too. So this right here is gonna be our opening to put our head inside the ducky. And I'll show you what I mean eventually when we get to inside. But I'm gonna make a tiny little snippet or you can mark it with pencil. And over here, this is for our stuffing. And by now you totally know what that means, okay? So once these are cut out, you'll see that you'll have two pieces with right sides touching. And you're gonna follow the same exact pattern or the same exact method for the wings. So what I'm gonna do here, because you know I love to do one cut and get the most I can out of it. I'm gonna fold. Actually, you know what? Do it this way to really help you. Cut yourself two pieces like this. And on this one, you're going to cut this one, you're gonna cut this way, pin down and cut this way. And then on this one, you'll flip it over and cut them out this way. And keep going until you have all of your pieces cut out. Little pieces are cut out. And I just wanted to explain to you why we have to take these patterns and flip them now that we have a different shape pattern. So when you're making something like, for example, um, the duckling head or even a plain circle, when you cut, it doesn't matter if you cut them all straight down this way because this is a symmetrical pattern. Symmetrical means that if you were to cut this shape straight down in half, this side, the left side and the right side are exactly the same. But when we look at the body, right, and the wings, if you cut it down in half, the left side is different than the right side. All right, so if you were to cut two, with facing down, like right on to the wrong side, then um, they wouldn't match up when you actually take them, right? And the right sides have to match, they wouldn't actually make a good match, a good cut, because one side, and I did it for you here purposely, I, I messed it up for you purposely here, okay? Is I cut them wrong sides, two sides, one on top of each other. Here's, here's why. You have to, when we're ready to sew, put the right sides together. So again, I didn't flip this one purposely and I messed it up to show you why, okay? Um, 
you have to sew them right sides together. So see how I'm lining them up because they're the same? This is the right side looking at me and this is the right side looking at me. Usually when you sew something together, the right sides have to touch. And because I didn't flip this one over, now I have a right side touching and a wrong side touching. Now look, when you're working with flannel, uh, I mean um, fleece, if you gotta look really close to see the difference, but if you really want the outside to look super nice, you, um, you, you want the right side facing. So I wanted to do that purposely for you to show you why you have to flip them over. I fixed my mistake in order to teach you how to do it the correct way. So um, before moving on, I want to show you what to do with one of the duck head pieces. The head, the round head of the duck is made out of three sort of like teardrop, I don't know, kind of peaked pieces. And on one of them, and your directions does, does say just on one fabric piece, here's what you're going to do. You're going to place this down on one of them and you're gonna trace out this oval. Of course, you cut it out of the paper and you're gonna trace it and you're gonna learn <laughs> that tracing or attempting to draw on fleece is not fun, okay? Because it really doesn't make a great line. And here's how I do it. If you have a better way of doing it, you're welcome, you're welcome to it. I know some people might snip it and stick their scissors in there and cut it, but being that it's not a defined line, I fold it and to the best of my ability, I'm gonna make a little curve of a cut there, meaning I'm just gonna snip it along the curve, and I know you can't really tell where that is. And I cut out this oval, which I may give a little touch up. It's not such a big deal if it's not perfect because all this is gonna do is, all we're gonna do with this actually stick the beak in there and sew the beak on. So that's pretty good as is. Okay, and I'm sorry I have this band-aid on my hand, but if you've noticed by now my tutorials, my hands are always um, have scratches and oh my gosh, bruises on them. I don't know if I'm a klutz or just my skin is so sensitive. Anything I touch, it just rips my skin apart. It's horrible. But anyway, enough about me, here we go. So I'm ready to start sewing the body of the pillow together. So what you're gonna need for that, I'm gonna push all these aside, is you're gonna need the tummy, and you're gonna need one of these pieces of the body, the duckling body. All right, and on the front, this is his tummy or her tummy. I'm gonna take the right sides and I'm gonna put them together. So the points up here are gonna match. I'm gonna match the points here. And I'm gonna match this with down here. So this is the bottom, the straight bottom. Okay, the second point is gonna match on that bottom. And two pins is all you really need. And in order to attach this, you can do a running stitch right across this to attach them. Try to keep the running stitch as small as possible, and meaning like the five or six stitches, but you're gonna notice it's so thick to hold this um, flannel together. I'm sorry, fleece, I always get those two confused. You can, it's kinda like tough to uh, sew, not tough, but it's thick and chunky that you're gonna have a hard time kind of seeing where you're landing, but try to keep them small is all I'm trying to tell you there. And make your way down to the other point and end off. I've sewn this around five to six stitches per inch or the best I can. And now um, you can see that the body is actually coming together. And I'm gonna take the other half of the body and I'm going to attach it to the tummy area. So this is the tummy that we sewed on, this shape here. I'm gonna attach it so my top point over here is gonna match right onto the seam there. I'm gonna put a pin in there to hold it in place. And then I'm gonna bring this point and bring it down to this seam. So the points are going to match up with the seams. And again, I am going to sew around this sort of half moon here, ending off well at each point. So I've completely sewn the tummy and the sides together. So when I turn it right side out, it is already beginning to look like the front tummy of the duck. Well, the duck doesn't have a back tummy, but <laughs> you get my point. So I'm gonna turn it right around and I'm gonna close it. So. 
Um, I'm going to match these notches and put a pin to hold the sides together. So according to my pattern, this is going to be the opening for the head. So if you want to see it this way to help you understand, this is the opening for the head. It's not the stuffing opening. This side here, the back of the duckling, is going to be where we stuff it. So I'm going to match these points together. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to is I'm going to sew from here all the way up to this first notch. So I'm going to sew the bottom and a little bit of the back side, and then from knit this notch up over the tail up to this notch. So if that was a little hard to understand, I'll show you here. You're going to sew now, okay? If it's let's have it face it the same way. We're going to sew from here all the way around, leave this open, and then again, we're going to start a new stitching here and close up the bottom. That up and left the head opening and the back opening. And I'm just going to turn it right side out via the head opening just so that I can see what I have so far. So I'm going to use the um, chopstick, one of the best tools you could ever have. I hope you found yourself a chopstick by now and to check it out. And that is exactly where we're supposed to be right now. This is the bottom, the head goes in here, and this is where we're gonna stuff. So let's turn it back, wrong side out. And this is how we're gonna leave it until we create the head and we are gonna put it inside the body. And that sounds crazy, but you'll see what I mean. So let's start with the head. So this is the duckling, duckling head pattern. We're gonna use this one last. So these, we're gonna take these and we're gonna put them right sides together. And we are going to pin them. So they are nice and aligned. And you're gonna match the bottom and you're gonna match this point. And I'm sure you already know what I'm about to tell you now. You're going to sew from here all the way up and end off. So all the way around here. All the way up. And I'm going to remove my pens and just take a look. Always making sure that you stay away from the edge so you don't create a little hole in there. All right. And now what we're going to do is before we attach this part, we're going to sew the beak together. Right sides together. And it's like making a really mini pouch, okay? You're going to um, sew from this point and create your arc or go around your arc. Now, what's really nice and forgiving about sewing with fleece is that you don't really see the stitches. So let me show you what I mean by this. As I sew, right, if I don't use a matching color, like this is yellow and I'm sewing on orange, you are actually not going to see it when you turn it right side out. I'm going to show you what I mean. First of all, see how it's already hidden in there? It's like the little pile fibers hide your stitches. And let me show you when I turn it right side out. It doesn't show. And you see how it's a little zigzaggy because I wasn't being so neat? You can actually scratch it with your fingernail and it hides that too. So the little pile fibers were kind of like lifting them up for where, from where we stitched, it's sandwiched in there, and it hides your stitching. And that's what I mean by this fleece being really forgiving when you work with it. So I'm gonna continue sewing, and then turn this beak right side out. And once we turn it right side out, we are gonna put it into the area here, or the face and flipped right side out. So now we're going to attach this beak to the face of the head. Does that make sense? The front of the head, so the face, meaning this piece. Okay, so we are going to make sure that this piece, as we work with it, we are looking at the wrong side. So the right side is under, and we're going to take this right side out, so this is the correct way, and we're going to stick it through the face opening or the mouth, or beak opening, whatever you want to call it. So as you're doing that, just to double check that you have it right, you can flip everything over, and if the beak is the correct side of the 
fleece and this yellow is the correct side of the fleece, you're doing good. All right, so I'm gonna flip it this way. And what we have to do here is these sides or, or the sides of the oval, I'm actually gonna pop it out to show you. The sides of the oval have to match the edges of the beak or where the seam is of the beak. So I'm gonna bring that together and you can pin it or you can actually tack it, like make two end off stitches there. I'm actually gonna find a really small pin and I say small, I meant short pin because I feel like when I'm working with something so tiny, the pins get in the way and they kind of annoy me, but I know they're there to help me. So I'm trying not to get annoyed with the pins and I'm going to uh, pin the opposite side as well. Again, the, the seam, right? Sorry if I was out of the way. The seam of the beak is coming up to the side here of the, of the opening, the mouth. Again, I'm going to find a nice short one. Oh, here we go. And I'm going to attach them. Again, you can put a really quick end off stitch in there to hold it as well if you find that the pins get in the way. You have to see how you feel with that. If they do, definitely pin it, uh, definitely add a stitch. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do, of course I'm gonna remove it right after I pinned it, because that makes sense, Adriana, <laughs> is I'm gonna take my double threaded needle as I'm grabbing it, and we are going to start sewing at one of the sides. Now what we're gonna do here is not make a running stitch. We are gonna make a blanket stitch. And here's how we do that. Super easy, you actually already know how to do it. Cause you're gonna make a short stitch grabbing the yellow and the orange flannel. Fleece, 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 get it right Adriana, fleece, okay. The fleece, I'm gonna grab both. And then as I pull through, I'm gonna stick the needle through the loop. Then I'm gonna move a little bit further. Okay, just a little bit. I don't wanna jump too much because then you'll uh, see it and it's just, it won't be a tight hold. Just a little and then stick my needle through the loop and I'm gonna keep going this way. This is a tighter hold for the beak of the stuckling. You can do a regular straight stitch or running stitch, but I believe this is a better hold. And since this flannel, all right, I need to give it up. Fleece, fleece. <laughs> since this fleece is so forgiving, it um, doesn't show on the opposite side. So you're gonna continue this beautiful blanket stitch all the way around this oval. So you're going to go all the way around until you've attached the beak. Remember, keep them together. And it's so important that the ends or the seams of the beak match up with the ends of the oval. So I just like to use my finger and my um, thumb of my opposite hand, sort of like a clip to hold it in place. Don't make your stitches or the spaces in between your stitches get too wide. And then as you're running out of thread, you'll make two of these stitches in the same exact spot as your end off. Rethread your needle and keep closing up. So as you get up to the um, pin, you can move it out of the way. Number one question my students always ask me, they always say, um, what do I do with the pins? I'm up to it. And I'm like, oh, move them out of the way. <laughs> get them out of the way. The whole point of pinning is to hold your fabrics together. So once you've sewn up to that point, if you think about it, your fabrics are together. So the pin is no longer needed. We thank you pin, but take a rest. You've done your job. Okay. So I just want to end off for you before I rethread. So let's say I want to end off right here, right? I just did one and I'm going to go in the same spot and do the same exact stitch, grabbing both loops, making sure. All right. So that I know is super tight and I'm going to cut it re-thread my needle with a double thread and double knot and continue sewing the rest of this beak or attaching the rest of this beak 
to the front face. So I finished sewing around with the blanket stitch and my beak is now attached to the front of my face or of the duckling's face. And this is what I mean by the um, fleece being very forgiving. You see how like my, my stitches are not exactly like uh, going and landing in the in the right place it's so forgiving here because you can't really see that because it's a little plush um and, and a little soft you don't really see those uh, stitches that are not exact and i really like that about fleece so i'm going to take the head that i had here began before and i'm going to attach this part so this is right sides and this is right sides and i'm going to put right sides together and i'm going to bring the ends together and pin them that was too thick kind of need a little bit of thinner pins here and I'm gonna bring the point up to these other two points or seam and I'm gonna make that match and you know exactly what to do now you're gonna sew from here all the way up to here so when you're sewing these, you kind of don't want to come to a very point here because then the, your duck head will, will come to a point as well. So what you want to do is kind of round off when you get here. And as you're hand stitching, just round it off. I've attached and sewn exactly what I said I was going to do on this side. And now our last thing in order to close off and make and form our head is to clo close off this part. So as you're sewing, just make sure that you don't get the beak caught in the seam so you'll just feel for that as you're doing your stitching and this is the last part and then we're going to move on into adding the eyes so i'm just going to sew all the way up here and remember as you get to the point just give it a little round don't come to a straight point just round off a little so i have sewn together my head and it doesn't have its eyes yet and um, it's now ready to have the eyes added so um, on my other two ducklings I've decided to use different size eyes and you can see by the placement of the eyes I gave them different personalities right so um, I'm gonna try to do something different even for this one because they're kind of like little duckling siblings and I wanted them to all have a slightly different look so I think I'm gonna go with these small button eyes and place them close together yeah i think that's what i'm going to do i'm going to place them both um close together and i'm going to put the backings on and i'm going to show you the best way to do this now i ordered these quickly on amazon and these are good ones but if you're planning to give this uh duckling or mama and with ducklings or whatever to a little child under three, I would suggest getting even stronger eyes, uh, safe plastic safety eyes with the washer, trying to find the washers. And they're very easy to find um, on Amazon or wherever else you wanna shop for them that are metal. They actually have a better hold. But the, if this is just something for you that you're gonna just have whatever on your bed or just as decor or as a gift to one of your friends, then these are fine. But if it's gonna be a gift for someone uh, or a little child, I should say, then just be really careful and mindful of that because they, they can possibly fall out with um, some strong pulling and you never know. So I'm going to place these together and I'm going to make little dots as to where I want them. Now, again, wherever you place the eyes, it really determines the personality. I mean, you could place them up here and farther apart, farther apart, um, up higher, close together. I, for some reason, like them right here, and I kind of want it to look a little bit like their siblings. So I'm gonna make two marks here, and I know that I need to puncture two tiny, tiny holes. Try to make these holes as tiny as possible, just enough to push this through. Or if you really try, you can actually puncture the um, flannel by just pressing really hard. I'm not gonna even fight it and try. I'm just gonna take the sharp, my sharp point and I'm gonna just turn it a little without piercing it because if you pierce it, if you pierce too much of a large hole, the whole entire eye can eventually fall out with a little bit of pulling, even with the washer on. So you can see here, I have it right in place. And here's what I do to help myself out. I see that I have it in place, right? I flip it over and what I do is, if it doesn't go in, I give it just 
my apologies right here i give it just a tiny 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 snippet just for it to push right in but again if you give it a large snippet and this you push on um it can actually the snip can actually grow larger and then eventually the whole eye can end up falling out so be careful with that all right so i did one and i pushed the washer on that's all you have to do is push it till you hear a click and it's in how cool is that right and then this one i won't even bother puncturing it from the outside i'm just going to do it this way a tiny guys a super super tiny snip like barely even a snip so i feel the point right there and i'm going to just give it a tiny little barely a snip because i'm afraid that it's going to get too big and the eye can slip through that actually they didn't work see i was a little too anxious not to make it big that it didn't even cut at all let's do it again all right here we go pop in all right work with us here work with us here stay in the camera adriana okay here we go there we go pop it in put the washer on push through the here click heard my click and my eyes are on oh my gosh it already has a cute personality i think one's a little bit higher than the other but you want to know something it's okay oh there we go i fixed it and if it did it's okay because that always little mistakes like that always remind me that you know what no one's perfect and it's okay so here's how we attach the head you're going to leave the body right side in so wrong side facing out right so you're going to see all your seams and where you've sewn and your head you're going to leave right side out the correct way and what you're going to do is with, this is the front, your front tummy. You're going to face the head and the front tummy on the same side, right? They're facing each other, and you're going to stuff the head into the body. All right, so the back has, the back of the head has a seam. You're going to match that seam with this seam here. You're going to bring them together. You're going to put a pin through it to hold it in place. So these seams match. And then, just getting that through there, the flannel, there I go again, the fleece is super, super thick. So when it's sewn together, what um, happens is sometimes the straight pin doesn't go through. And then the front has two seams, right? These two seams are going to go right on each side of this center seam. So this center seam is going to go in between this seam. Now, if you want the head turned, possibly you noticed, let me get, just give a little turn. My mama duck had the head, had a turning look. So I, I did it purposely. I made her head turn and so she's not looking directly to the center as if she's looking at her duckling. So if you want that, whether you're making the mama or you're making one of the ducklings, how you do that is you take either one of these seams and you line it up with the point. And then depending on which side you're, you lean it more towards, that's the side the duckling or the mama will be looking. I don't want that for the duckling, so I'm going to leave it right in the center. So this center is going to go in between the two seams here. I'm just going to bring it here, and I'm going to pin it in place. Looking for my small pins. Short pins to keep this in place. And now, using that same blanket stitch, I'm going to start from one point, and I'm going to easily work my way around to this point. And then keeping this up and aligned, I'm going to use my blanket stitch to bring it all together. So I'm sure it may have possibly seemed like something a bit um, more difficult in the beginning, like how are we going to attach this head? But that's how you do it. And when you actually look at it taken apart, it's not that difficult. Using the blanket stitch, we are going to stitch. All right, I'm going to start here just because I, I always like starting on one of the seams. And once you have at least one stitch put in, what you can do is move the pin, straight pin out of the way. And I'm going to work my way to the other seam. Using my finger and thumb, my pointer and my thumb, 
sort of as like a clip holding them together. Again, be really careful as not to make super wide stitches from near each other. So stay close to each other. The, the tighter your stitches are, the stronger your head, your duckling head or mama duck head will be attached to the body. And as you pull up, put your needle through the loop. And you're gonna work your way around doing this blanket stitch all the way around. The diameter of the neck area is all sewn with the blanket stitch. And now we're gonna turn it right side out. So you don't have to pull the head out. It's actually easier if you leave it there because we're gonna go from the back of the duckling and we're gonna just easily just like a t-shirt, as I always tell you, push the rest of its body out. And here you have born an adorable duckling. How cute. Oh, I love seeing this. Okay, chopstick time. When you flip the tail part, which is a little bit, not really pointy, but rounded point, I like to just use the chopstick to push that out a little. And now you have what looks like your duck, Ling. So um, before we do anything else, um, I do the wings are last. I do want to start stuffing the beak first, because like I always tell you, when you stuff, always go to the furthest area from the opening, and that would be the actual beak. So using your stuffing a small amount, you're going to actually push some into the beak area. Just let me grab some stuffing. Okay, so we have some stuffing here, just a small amount. I'm going to push into the area of the beak. And I don't want to overstuff my beak. I will show you how to add the dimples as the very last step, but I don't want to overstuff it. You can overstuff it if you feel like you want a super, super like full uh, beak, go for it. And then I'm going to stuff the rest of the head. So your fingers here are the best tools. You're gonna use your fingers to find the neck hole and push stuffing into the head. All right, there we go. And we will press some in there into the head. Until I fill up the shape so it's nice and round. And you'll see as you're filling, notice how I'm pushing the top. It does round it out nicer doing that. Okay, you will see how nice this adorable ducky looks. How cute, it came alive. He or she or whatever you want to refer to it as. And I'm gonna keep stuffing the body the stuffing of the duckling I wanted to remind you to use your uh, chopstick and um, push the stuffing into the pointed area of the tail here it actually helps you can use your finger as well but if you have your chopstick it does help also I told you to collect these rocks right to add to the bottom I add them uh, to the ducklings that I know I'm not giving to little children like really young children I mean, if it's safe or not, that's for you to decide or your parents, but I feel like better safe than sorry. But these are for me, and um, I know I can have them. Uh, rocks in them, because I'm not going to be throwing them at anyone. All right, so um, what they do is they help the duckling stand up and be weighted, okay? You can even use pellets, which are made for stuffed animals, and I'll add a link to that to the resources or materials for this course in that section of this course but for this I just went into my garden like I said and I chose these rocks and I'm going to use the flatter edge I'm going to stiff stiff I'm going to stick them here on um, right on the fleece sandwiching them between the fleece and the actual stuffing so they're at the very bottom and the weight of the rock actually holds the duckling up this one's kind of big let me see I'll go with this large one why not right 
And before I close it up, I'm going to see how it looks and how it works. This one works well. But if you're just making these as cute little pillows, right, that are probably just going to sit on your bed or I don't know, wh whatever you may decide, then you maybe don't need the rocks. They're totally up to you. They're, they're um, optional and up to you. So for closing this up, you actually don't need the, the blind stitch or the invisible stitch. You can do it if you choose. It, it always is the best option, but you can actually do the blanket stitch and I'll show you why. Another reason why this wonderful fleece is so forgiving. So I'm going to do the blank stitch right here and I'm going to go right across, right? And I'm going to stick the needle through the loop and I'm going to stay close as I do this. Again, you could do the blind stitch, but because it's so forgiving, I'm going to show you why I choose not to do it for fleece. Okay, I'm gonna pull tight, not too tight, so I snap it. And my pointer and my thumb are holding the opening close just with, I flapped a little bit of it down. The nice thing about this fleece is that it does not fray. That's a beautiful thing. Another wonderful and forgiving thing. I'm telling you, fleece is so great to work with. That's why you'll find some projects um, on the internet or wherever you look where um, you can create like no sew projects and they ask you to get fleece because it, it doesn't fray really. So I've done this blanket stitch and what you could do is rub your nail over it. And again, like I showed you earlier, the little piles or, you know, these little piles here lift up in between the stitches and it actually covers your stitching. So there's really no reason to do the blind stitch. You, you don't really see it. And you're gonna continue closing. And on the very last one, you're gonna do it twice. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your needle, let's say this was like the closing, right? Or, or the very end, ending of my opening, I would stick my needle through the opening or the seam and I would pull it through and cut it just like we did in the many, many other pillows we've done in Let's Make It Academy. So I'm going to close this off and then show you how to make the wings and attach them. Now for the wings, I'm going to make sure that they are right sides touching, right sides touching. And I'm going to sew all around them, leaving an opening down here. I am choosing to leave it down here because this is probably almost the straightest most part here. So sew around and turn it right side out, just like a pillow or pouch we've made in the past. So I'm closing up my uh, wings for the ducklings and I'm using the same ladder stitch just like I closed up the duckling, right? So for the mama wings, what I did was I put a tiny bit of stuffing in there so that they have just some depth. But for the ducklings, I decided to leave them empty. And actually, the um, fleece is so fluffy that it, they kind of do look a little bit stuffed. But it's your choice if you want to stuff them a little. And if you do, just put a little stuffing in there and then close them up just like we closed up the opening. And then we're going to do a very similar stitch to attach them to the body of the duckling. Attaching the wings is a very simple process. So you're going to place that wherever you want it on the side of the duckling, right? And then you're going to go from under. I already kind of did it to begin with. Let me get a little closer there. And you're just going to make a little stitch. You're going to grab a little bit of the body and a little bit of the wing. And you're going to repeat this process a few times. You want to make sure, though, that you don't grab the front part of this area of the wing. Okay. So you're gonna do that a few times here until you have a really good tight hold. And then you're going to end off. So I'm gonna do an end off right here. Uh, 
All right, I'm sensing a knot, so let me just straighten it up so we don't get a knot. You don't want a knot there, because then you'll, not a knot, but like an extra loop. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna go from under and do a second end off right there. Okay, then we, how cute, we trim it. We create another double knot and we move along to do the same thing here. Come on, magic knot, here we go. All right, so I'm gonna do the same attachment here. And again, if you're giving this to a much younger child, you may wanna do this a few times all around the wing to really attach it on well. I'm not giving it to a younger child, so um, this tacking for me is more than enough. We just want to make sure this wing stays in place. Making these ducklings are really so much fun. What you can do is you can give them personalities. So you can give them bow ties. You can just sew them um, bows for the head, bow ties around their necks. You can just add any extra whatever you want to them to add to their personality. I left mine plain because I just really wanted the traditional or the classic looking rubber ducky. But again, you whatever you do with them could be really interesting. And I'm sure you're really creative and you'll come up with some pretty cool ideas inspiring me too as well. Okay, I'm gonna attach my other one and then we can say that this ducky is complete. Actually, the duckling is not complete yet. I have to show you how to add the dimples. If you choose to add them, then it's complete. So I have a double threaded needle with a coordinating thread, but you don't need a coordinating thread. Um, even if you continue using your yellow or whatever you were using, it won't really show because you saw how forgiving it was. So I'm gonna add two dimples on top. It Wherever you place them is, is up to you. So I'm gonna go from under first. And I'm going to come down, sort of making a stitch. And then I'm going to just pass it a few times, trying to stay in the same place. But by making a little bit of a stitch, giving it length, giving it some length and not landing in the same area will make the um, dimple more visible. And then I'm going to pull tight. See it there? There's your dimple. I'm going to do a nice tight end off in the back and I'm not gonna cut it. I'm gonna show you how to go right from inside of the beak to do the second one. So I'm going from the same spot and I'm gonna land where my second dimple's gonna be. You can even land in the front. I came in through the back, it really doesn't matter. And then I'm gonna start from under, come up, okay and going down. I'm gonna pass it at least twice. Okay, back down, and then I'm gonna end off. If you want to make the dimple even deeper, you can keep doing it a, a few times, like doing these stitches a few times. I'm going to actually um, stop right there. You can see it, and that's enough for me, I think. And I'm gonna end off. Of course, there's a knot. I promise you this happens only when I video. <laughs> and there's a second one, so it's totally fine. With our fig forgiving fleece, it hides it all. I'm gonna trim it anyway. I'm going to do the finger scratching. And there's our adorable beak. And now it is complete. So let's line up these guys and look at them together. Here they are, Mama in the lead and three ducklings following. I think they're all different and they all have their own personality. And I really hope you enjoyed making